In our video so far, we're always approaching problems from a lawyer's perspective. Today, we're going to put on the head of a startup founder, exploring employment law issues. What should you know and how can FD Light help you? Let's find out. The first thing you need to know as a founder is do you actually need an employment agreement? Now, unbeknown to you and me, probably when I first started, you actually need an employment agreement setting out key terms that is mandated by the Employment Act in Singapore. Now, we've made your life easy. On FD Lite, the basic document, which goes for a pretty reasonable price, sets out all the key terms that an employment contract needs to cover in Singapore. Well, look no further than this beautiful yellow box which sets out the length of employment, probation period, work arrangement, your responsibilities or employee responsibilities, salary, leave benefits and termination notice periods. So these are things you need in every employment agreement and we have that sorted for you in the basic document. But when do things start changing for them? When you start hiring more employees, in Singaporean terms you put, your tai chi becomes more, which is you have more problems that come your way. So that's where the standard document comes into play. So what are some of the things that you want to include in a standard employment agreement, which is not mandated necessarily under the employment legislation? Well, the first thing you want to care about is maybe things like the standard of conduct. If an employee keeps coming in late to work, or if an employee is logging in for three hours a day, calling in sick every two days, what sort of conduct or standard of conduct do you want to impose on your employees? The second thing is confidentiality. So this is probably not a term that's mandated under employment legislation, but as an employer, you want to protect yourself by saying, hey employees, you're now privy to a lot of really confidential information on how we're building this product. So you got to keep it confidential and we're signing this employment agreement to keep that information there. The other things you really want to lock it in is IP assignment. So if they're building something for you, you want to make sure that the IP is being assigned to the company and they cannot run off with your IP. So these are things which we cover in the standard employment contracts to cover common issues that we see founders facing. And then when does the complex document come into play? Now, when we are hiring CC employees, the really important guys, or if your company has developed to a stage whereby you're saying, hey, we really want to get robust employment agreements into play. It is perhaps, in my opinion, the gold standard of what an employment agreement should be. And if you can have it in play, that would be beautiful. Some of the things that we cover that's not found in standard are things like workplace policies. Now, we see it quite common in the VC deals, a mandate to the startup that after the fundraise closes, you guys are going to start implementing employee policies in terms of anti-discrimination, no sexual harassment at work, making sure that there are clear policies in your company. The other things that we cover in this complex documents are things like undertakings during employment and a non-circumvention clause. What are we trying to get at over here? There is technically nothing that stops an employee from holding three jobs. In fact, it's kind of common. It becomes a problem though for your company when the person starts getting distracted or maybe starts sharing or moonlighting and sharing confidential information during the moonlighting process. Now, we don't want to dictate how people run their lives, but so far as the way they run their lives affects your business, you kind of want to care about that. Other things that we put in would be things like conflict of interest. So conflict of interest can come in a couple of different forms, but let's start with restrictive covenant. The restrictive covenant is first to protect your company to say that, okay, if you're a CC employee or you're a, an important person in the company, we don't expect you to be setting up a competitive business when you leave our startup. Neither do we expect that you go to our competitor, you know, let's say two months from leaving our company. That's too close to heart, right? 
So the other thing that we cover in the complex document is things governing the use of personal data of employees. Now, every Singapore company needs to appoint a data protection officer and to implement a privacy policy. So most startups are concerned with the handling of personal data of customers, but the personal data of employees also has to be governed in the right manner. So that's what we do in the complex document. We slip it in so that you don't have to worry so much and we try to satisfy to the maximum extent that we can the requirements that the PDDA requires in respect of the use of employee personal data for data retention matters. Now, if you like what you're seeing, the link is just below. Have fun, explore it and tell us what we can do better for you, my startup founder.